Now, welcome to our today's science lesson, that is standard 8, today is on 27th of August 2020. Now, during our last topics, we have been covering a topic that is uh, plants, and we finished discussing about plants during our last lesson. Now, today, we are going to introduce another new topic, which now we are going to start talking about animals. Now, after discussing plants, now we get also to how to know about animals because both plants and animals are very essential parts or topics in our examination, more so during us primary level and both at secondary level. Now today we are going to cover introduction on our animals and now on part of introduction we have to know or identify types of animals. We have those wild animals, we have domestic animals. That one you covered during your uh, 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 that is standard uh, one, standard two, you covered about the types of animals, that's wild animals, you talk of lions, elephants, etc. We talk of domestic animals, where you talk of cattle, sheep, uh, goat, or chicken, and also other examples, donkey, horses, and uh, camels. Now, after understanding both wild and uh, domestic animals, you now come and discuss now the characteristics of those animals. All animals, they have specific characteristics, and there is no animal that can survive without these characteristics. This characteristic that enables us to identify this one being an animal and this one not being an animal is the, are the following. Number one, we look at feeding. We get that all animals, all animals, when all animals, they feed. All animals, they feed. Feeding is just the way how animals, they take food and for growth. That's the, uh, obtaining nutrients from other, either other animals or plants. All animals, they move, and we'll discuss about movement. Why do animals move from one region to another? All animals, they excrete. When you talk of excrete, that is excretion. We discussed excretion during our first topic, where we said is the removal of waste products. Now, all animals also, they react to change in environment. You may get that now we have either a higher temperature or low temperature. We may have cold or warmth. Now, if there is warmth, what happened to this animal? You may get an animal moving from one zone, going to another zone because of high temperature, or moving from one zone to another zone because of low temperature. Then also, the animals, they reproduce. When you talk of reproduction, this is the production or is the giving birth of young ones. They give birth to young ones. Now all animals they give birth to young ones, that's they multiply, then all animals die. You have, when the animals have grown old or even because of certain diseases, you may get that animals die and also we say the animals grow. Now animals grow. Now when you have a young ones, they grow to a bigger ones, then after growing they reproduce to another one, then they multiply. So all of these they are characteristics of all animals. If asked to give the characteristics of animals, number one, they feed, they move, they excrete, they react to change in environment, they reproduce, they die, they also grow. Now, we have also to discuss more about feeding because all animals they experience types of feeding they have always different types of feeding the way human beings feed is different from the way chicken feeds is different from also the way cow and sheep feed now Number one, we have those animals that feed to plants, of, of which we had already discussed during our uh, the topic on uh, food chain. We say that we have those animals that feed directly on plants alone, where we say they are herbivorous. Then we have those animals that feed on uh, plants, both plants and animals, we say they are omnivorous. And also we say they are animals that now feed on only specifically, they feed on other animals, those are uh, carnivorous. Now, after identifying the animals feeding on plants, feeding on plants and animals and feeding on animals, we also now have to discuss, now how do these animals get those products into their body? We have those animals that they feed on others by sucking. By sucking mostly we talk of insects including butterfly, housefly and other uh, insects. So number one we have those that suck, they suck the substance, either they suck the sap of a plant or they suck a blood from a uh, ticks, they suck blood from animals. Then also we have those that uh, they eat by f chewing. Chewing, example, include the cow, 
Asia and a grasshopper. We may get a cow, they chew their grasses. Then also we have those that feed by pecking. Picking is just on chicken and all birds. But they pick their, uh, either their grains or the nectar. Nectar is by sucking. That is also the nectar feeders. We will discuss about nectar feeders, grain eaters and also all that. Then after discussing all about feeding, we move to discussion on movement. Now I said we will discuss about how now, what causes the movement in animals. Animals may move because of number one, they are looking for food, they, that's searching for food. Number two, they move because of the changes in temperature and also they may be moving because of the escaping of enemies. When you have an enemy somewhere, you have to move to another area where you will be uh, secure. So they may escape enemies, they move because of food, or they move because looking for the mating. When you get a female cow or a female, a female cow, they move to another area where they may get a male cow, so that now they can have what we call mating. Or so that they carry out what we call reproduction. Then also they can move seeking for a favorable weather. That is, they move because of the uh, weather maybe it's bad from one area. They move to another area where they'll get a favorable weather. Now, we have different types of movements. Animals, they move differently. The way we as uh, human beings move is different from how birds move. Now, number one, we have those animals that move by walking. Walking includes man, dog, camel etc we have those that move by flying that one includes birds bird and other animals grasshopper then we have those that move by either crawling crawling includes ants and baby a young baby it moves by crawling then we have those that move by leaping leaping and uh, leaping the example is grasshopper rabbits and kangaroo they move by leaping we have those that move by jumping from one zone to another that one includes spider and toad they move by jumping from one area to another then we have those that move by swimming commonly is fish duck and uh, also whale we will talk about the characteristics that enables these animals to move by swimming but those animals are why do animals move by crawling those characteristics that enables other animals to move by jumping therefore we move to another example of movement where we talk of slithering slithering mostly is on snakes they slither mostly on grass and uh, other surfaces so that they can either run away from uh, enemies and also either seeking for food we have those that move by gliding gliding mostly is snail and uh, most of where you understand uh, snail when it moves it forms a white it leaves a white patches behind that is a snail so it moves by gliding we have that animal that move by galloping that one is a horse now after discussing a uh, movement in animals the reasons why they move and also the ways in how the methods on how they move we now move to how now animals remove their waste products now when we discuss about removal of waste product we remember excretion in our animals now this one covers uh, just a summary on now how this excretion and what are the waste products that are produced we discuss them during our first topic that is in human body now Excretion, we said, is just the removal of waste products. Now, the waste products may be solid or they may also be liquid. Now, in animals, we say that uh, solid uh, waste products are called the excrete, but the liquid ones are called the urine. Now, when you talk about excrete and the urine, Mostly, when you talk of uh, a human being, you may talk of feces, and when you talk of uh, a human being, still you talk of urine. We talked about uh, the consistencies of urine during our excretion topic. Then also, we talk about production. They, they, they reproduce. They produce dung. When you talk of dung, this is in cows. The cows produce dung as the solid products. Then we have those that produce droppings. Droppings is mostly in birds, more so chicken and other birds. They produce droppings. Then we have those that produce the pellets. Pellets is on rabbits, goats. Those ones produce pellets. When you talk of pellets, these are just uh, in a, a, a round, round, small, small and round uh, solid substances that are removed by goats and rabbits they are called pellets now we have the reaction to change in environment now when you're discussing about reaction on change of environment i said that also they can move to another zone which zones do they move now we may have a higher temperature. When we have a higher temperature, you get that human beings, they wear uh, lighter clothes and even others do not wear any cloth. But now we have those that also when there is a cold uh, environment, we have 
many people they wear heavy clothes because th there is change in environment so we have those changes that take place when uh, there is changes in environment number one we can have one person moving in to look for searching for shelter when it is raining obviously now also when there is high sunshine most people move to look for shelter and also they wear heavy clothes during a uh, uh, wet season or a cold weather then we lighter clothes during a higher temperature or a dry seasons now we have those that change colors most of it's a chameleon why do a chameleon change a color? Now, when a chameleon moves to a green environment, because it has to survive in that environment, and also to prevent it from attacking from uh, with enemies, it changes the color so that it can be uh, looked the uh, same with the environment. If it moves to an uh, environment that is reddish, it also changes its color to become to fit in that environment. Now, we have those animals that react in change of environment by patting. Patting mostly in dogs. Dogs they pat more so during evening time because of the higher temperature so they open up their mouth and they start uh, breathing in and out very fast this one it helps them now to cool their bodies this one helps it to cool their bodies now we have those animals that react to change in environment by just coiling for example is millet a uh, milliped when you talk of a milliped it coils exactly when you touch a milliped you may get that now it coils to form around substance and when it coils like that it's just because it has sensed danger so that now that is just a method of it being prevented from the enemy now we have those animals that react to change in environment by mostly frequent urination frequent urination mostly experienced during cold seasons when when there is cold weather for example when it is raining you may get that most people not more so human beings or other animals you get that when they have taken in a lot of water they uh, could go on urinating continuously because now they have to remove the substances so that they cool their body so that one is also called uh, uh, is also a way of uh, animals reacting to change in an environment. So these are the ways in which now those animals that can change, they can react to uh, environment changes. Now, after that, we now go to discuss about the animal products. Remember, it is introduction. Now, animal products. When you talk about animal products, we have different animals that produce different uh, uh, products. We have those birds that produce eggs. We have those animals that produce, we get skin from them. We have those that we get uh, meat. We have those that we get beef, uh, beef that is meat. We have those that we get hide, egg and skin. We have those that we get just hooves of it. So these hooves, skin, milk, they have importance as to human body or to human beings or to other animals. Now, Number one, products, we have the hide and also skin. When you talk of hide, this one is mainly gotten from uh, bigger animals or larger animals. But when you talk of skin, we talk of smaller animals. Now, eggs mostly in birds, for example, chicken, ducks, and geese. Also, we have meat, milk, those are the products. Then we have... Uh, we have hooves, wools, and uh, horns. Those are the products that we get from these animals. Now, after identifying the products that we find from these animals, we can now classify these animals considering the products that they produce. Now, how can we classify the animals? What is classification, first of all? We said classification is just the grouping of animals or grouping of things considering their similarities or differences in their uh, appearance. Now, here we group them considering their products that they produce. Now, that will lead us to classification of farm animals according to their products. Now, number one, we can classify animals as poultry. We can classify animals considering goats. We have those that we call sheep. We have cattle. We have camel. Now, when you start by discussing poultry, Poultry, this is just generally, uh, these are just uh, birds that are also kept at home. Mostly they are birds that are kept at home. Examples, they include chicken, ducks, duck, and geese. Now, what do we get from these animals that enables us to say now these are poultry? Number one, we have those that we call broilers. From the term broiler, we say that these are uh, birds that are kept mostly for 
just production of egg for meat that's production for meat that is broilers when you talk of uh, layers layers we call them layers because only they produce we kept them that's only they are kept for production of eggs now that is broilers that is chicken that kept for meat then layers chicken that are kept for production of eggs also we have those uh, birds that are kept that is stack ducks geese these ones are mainly kept mainly kept for production of meat tax duck and geese are mainly kept for production of meat now what are other substances that we get or what are such other products that we get from these birds or we get from poultry from poultry these animals are covered with uh, what we call feathers now feathers is also a product of this uh, poultry now also we get manure when you say there is production of uh, uh, pellets and droppings from these birds, we say these uh, products are now collected somewhere. When they decompose, they lead to manure. This manure is used for farming and in our agricultural farms. Now we have other parts, we have other animals which, which we are called now goats. Now from goats, we obtain number one, milk, and also from goat we obtain what we call meat. The, and other also we obtain skin and what we call mohair. Mohair, this is just the hair of the, uh, the goat, is called mohair. Now, we have those goats that specifically produces milk, these are called dairy goats. Goats kept for production of milk are called dairy goats. Now, we also have those animals that are grouped as sheep. We call it a sheep. They are only kept mainly for production of meat. And the meat that is produced by this sheep is called mutoni. The mutoni is the meat that is produced by a sheep. Now also, this from sheep, we obtain what we call now, it also gives us wool. And wool is just the hair of the, uh, the sheep, which is now called wool. Now, this also we obtain skin from the uh, sheep, and uh, also we obtain manure. We said all the uh, solid products, when we collect them together, they give us what we call manure that helps us in our farm production. Now, the process by which we remove now the hair of the uh, sheep is what we call shivering. Somebody can ask you, an, examin an examiner can ask you, what is the process by which now we cut or we harvest wool from a sheep? This is what we call shearing. Now, we move to uh, kettles. A kettle... A kettle, this one, they are grouped into either cow or it can also be called a dairy, that is a dairy kettle and also a beef uh, kettle. When you talk of a dairy kettle, dairy kettle from the term dairy is kept for milk, then beef kettle are also kept for meat production. The other things that we get from kettle, we have manure we have a hide and the hide you said is just the skin but now the skin of a larger animal we call it a hide so also we obtain manure from uh, kettles lastly we are going to discuss about a camel and camels are mostly found in this region now example of products that we get from a camel number one we get milk and also we obtain meat from these camels now what is the other uses of this camel Camel is used for transportation in mainly in dry regions. For example, at this Garissa you get camels are used for transportation of heavier uh, products from one zone to another zone, either for uh, business issues or also for production. Now, we have that a mother can give birth to many young ones, but at once. What's the name given to those uh, young ones of a, uh, an animal that has been gi uh, given birth once, just the same time, but now there are many. These are called the litter. Now, litter, these are many young ones that have been given birth or have been given birth by one mother at the same time. They are called litter. Now, this is just part of introduction of uh, our, our topic, which we are going to cover during the next times. Now, we have to understand the types of animals. We have to understand the products that we get from different animals. We have to understand the classification of these animals considering their products. And also, moving forward, we are going to discuss now the classification considering generally the animals without considering the their products now that's all about today's lesson we also have we will also continue discussing animals as we move forward otherwise thank you very much let's meet next time inshallah